Hi everybody and welcome to 7 Social Media Tricks for Selling Your Apparel Online. I'm Courtney Gabetza with Stalls TV and today in this live class we're going to be talking all about social media and the way that how we sell products as apparel decorators is changing and how we need to evolve to be able to reach um, new customers and grow our sales. And so I think um, if you've been in the industry for a while or maybe you're just starting out it's clear that the way people buy products and the way that we do sales is changing. In fact, years ago when I started into sales, um, cold calling was one of the main ways to reach people. But today we find, especially if you're in um, more of a niche audience, cold calling isn't always the most effective and the most effective way to grow sales, especially for apparel. And so we have to get creative on how we do this. And social commerce, as they're calling it now, really is the way to do that using your social presence or your social media channels to sell product. Apparel is designed for this. Um, vi visually, people purchase products um, like apparel, fashion items, accessories by seeing them and having to have them. And so a lot of the times the social channels that we're using are designed for this. We just have to make sure we're optimizing our pages and optimizing what we're using to be able to leverage these tools. And so there's actually a, um, study done by Yotpo, which is an organization that handles social media, and they find that online stores with an active social presence have 32% higher sales rate than those without. And so we find that businesses that actually have a social media presence are getting better sales. And so today we're going to be reviewing seven specific tricks that you can start to implement with your business to be able to grow your sales. And so we'll take a look and kick it off with the first one and the most basic, but I think one important thing to notice is that the first trick is the most important. This will be the guideline that we're using to set up all of the other tips that we're going to give you in today's class, and that is to know your audience. You absolutely have to know who you're reaching out to and who you're selling to. You have to understand your customer base and use the platform and the tools that will best reach them. If you don't have this step nailed down, absolutely nothing else is going to matter because you're missing the crucial step of being able to reach them and speak to them in a way that um, will allow them to want to buy your product and something that's going to be targeted to them. So first we want to understand the customer base and we want to use a platform. I, you'll notice I say that we want to use a platform that is best to reach them. Especially if you're a small business owner or an apparel decorator that doesn't have a large staff, there's a lot of social media channels that you can use, a lot of platforms. Um, but you don't want to always use all of them, especially if it's not going to be a valuable use of your resources. Do you want to be on Facebook or Instagram? Should you be on both of them? Um, that's an important thing to note whenever you're deciding your strategy for um, selling apparel to um, different audiences. So you want to know your audience. Are they teenagers? Are they millennials that maybe are utilizing Instagram more than Facebook? Are they parents? Are you selling children's apparel to mothers? And so um, maybe they're more on Facebook and you can target them in a different way. Or maybe you're selling to businesses. And so maybe um, Facebook and um, Instagram both aren't really the targeted audience for where you want to be. Maybe you want to be on LinkedIn for this. So really understanding what platform should I be on and where should I be communicating to be able to drive the most sales. That's an interesting thing to remember when you're using and creating this. You don't have to be everywhere and you shouldn't be if it doesn't make sense for your business. Um, one thing to note is that your social strategy really should, your sales strategy and your social strategy should align with your business goals. So what you want to do should, your social should just be a part of that and keep that in mind when you're creating your content. So once we know our audience and we dial down who they are, what they like, um, and really think about what products and what is going to be relevant that I have to them. I hear a lot from decorators um, that they have tried social media selling or they've tried this channel, they've tried this and that, but uh, it doesn't work for me because I just sell custom apparel. Well, you have to have a niche of some sort. You have to have a customer in mind when you're creating your designs. Um, you should never be waiting for orders to come to you um, because you want to be able to create products and create things that are going to sell well to your customer base rather than just sitting around waiting for somebody to say, hey, I need a custom screen print job or I need a custom embroidery job. Um, you want to be able to say, I have this available and create the need that they may not realize that they have. And that's what a lot of social media does. So we understand our audience and then we start to um, publish and create things that will be relevant to them. And so when we think about the ways that we want to use um, social media and our presence once we know our audience is, 
First, we're going to do the research, understand who they are. This is where you really dial in on that knowing your customer. Then we're going to publish relevant content. And so things that appeal to them. I mentioned earlier that you may be selling to parents because children's apparel is your niche. And so you want to publish things that are relevant to parents. You certainly don't want to publish, if your idea is your sales channel is for children's apparel, you're not going to be publishing things on your page that may be relevant to um, something a little bit different like a um, sports company. So keep that in mind whenever you're creating your um, strategy for what you're posting and then think about ways to connect with them. So you're posting things like videos, you're posting things like photos, things that tell a story and the applications that you're um, creating customer testimonials. Did somebody wear an item of yours and post it on their social channels? Can you reshare that out, get their permission to do that so that you're creating relevant content that shows them people love and use your products? Um, connecting with them, asking questions um, that are relevant to them, conducting polls to learn a little bit more about your customer base, feeling like they're engaging with you is really important on your social channels because that's really what people are doing. Uh, people don't come onto any of these social channels wanting to be sold, even though they often are um, through advertisings and posts and things that businesses do. They're there to communicate with their friends, with their family, um, and they want your brand to be a part of that. And so the things that you're posting should be relevant to that customer base and they should be in a way that you're um, helping them or you're conversating with them rather than telling them bye, 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 bye. So some things to keep in mind there. Um, also, if you can offer advice, that's another great way to use your social media channels. So the first tip we've done here so far is know your audience. Um, so if you're just joining us here on Facebook Live, this is going to be seven tips and tricks for so using social media to sell your apparel. The first one, the absolute most important, is going to be to understand and know your audience. The second one that we're going to take a look at is also incredibly important. It's another one of those foundations that's really important for the other tricks that we'll talk about today, and that is the good photography sales. So when you have a um, brick and mortar store where people are coming into your showroom, you can create your showroom and display it in a way that um, really looks like it has your quality and your brand in mind. Now, whenever you are um, selling in a social aspect or online on a website, you really have to find a way to portray that quality and that to them. And that is done by good photography. And so good photography is really, really important to making sure your products stand out, stand out online and present that quality to them. So let's talk about a few ways to do that. First, you want to start with new technology. So the technology that you're using should be relatively new from a camera standpoint. So having the newest in camera technology, maybe it's a DSLR camera, maybe it's a newer smartphone. In fact, today you'll find that a lot of the building cameras on smartphones have um, the technology really that give you a pretty quality photo as long as you follow a, color, a couple other rules like creating a well-lit space, which we'll talk about here shortly. So having those um, high quality cameras is very important. The most important when you're creating quality photos for online use is to be able to create a well-lit space. And so creating a well-lit space can be done in a few different aspects. And so you can use natural light, which is often done by coming next to a large big window if you have one in your shop um, and using that kind of lighting to create a bright space. Now, if you're in a dark location where you don't, aren't able to kind of achieve that light uh, behind your images, then a thing that I would consider doing is um, purchasing a few tools to create that well-lit space. And so I'll go ahead and look at a few of those. Um, that is done by using pop-up lights, such as light clamps, freestanding lights, um, adding a light tent or whiteboard, so you can kind of create that white backdrop as well for your lighting. Having a tripod is going to be important so you can get um, the shots and have a stable shots that you need as well. And you can get all of this for pretty inexpensive, even if you're just starting out. I see a lot of um, apparel shops that actually create what they would consider a mini photography studio within their location so they can quickly take images before they send jobs out to their customers. That's a really, really good idea. Um, taking images as you're printing items to be able to promote them and having them taken in a way that is going to portray your brand the correct way and that's going to help to sell your products. And so you can get um, a light tent or the whiteboards needed on Amazon for somewhere around um, $20 to $40. You can get light clamps for somewhere around $10. The tripod usually runs you the same thing about $20 to to $90 in a tripod. So we're looking at a couple hundred dollars invested. Now, 
You can use something like a smartphone if you have a high quality phone, maybe a Samsung, uh, maybe a LG, maybe a new iPhone that has a high quality camera. Um, and if you're using a camera, especially a smartphone camera, you want to make sure you know your settings because the settings that you use are going to be important. So you want to make sure that the camera and the settings that you're using have a great image quality and a high megapixel so that you're getting that quality image and result and it's not grainy whenever you upload it to your social channel. So keep that in mind as well. Now, if you're willing to spend extra, Canon um, and the Rebel camera makes a really great option as well. There's a few other Nikon and Can Canon styles um, that you can look into for just kind of a point and shoot or a DSLR style camera. So keep that in mind, but whatever you decide to do, photography is incredibly important. We can talk even more about the way that you stage your photos. So that helps to sell product and stage um, the images that you want your customers to use. And this is really going to all backfill into what you're doing on your websites, on your social media sites, and in your advertising that we'll talk about here shortly. So a few different ways to take your photos. There's flat shots and there's model shots. Um, both of these work well for different aspects. So um, a lot of people like the flat shots on something like Instagram. The model shots work really well on Facebook. So think about how you're going to show your products. The model shots are more like lifestyle photos. So this is cool because you're um, using models to show off the clothes in real life experiences. So that's a really great way to do that. You can even use current customers that you have and ask them to um, either help you take, sh give them a free garment so they can take some um, wear the garment, you can take some shots for model shots, maybe you've got friends and family that are in your target audience that you can use for some of these model shots. It's not always going out and um, looking for a specific modeling agency, agency or something for these applications. Just look and see who's in your target audience that you can leverage customers um, or friends and family that you can do that with. Now with flat shots, it all comes about staging and making um, the image appear as if it's something that the customer really wants to wear or has to have. And this really comes down to knowing your customer and your audience that we talked about in that first tip. Because your customer may be somebody who's a little bit more modern or edgy. So a flat shot that's got white, gray, or black as the backdrop might create kind of that edgy, modern look behind an image. Now, if you're something that's a bit more of a boutique or a fashion, maybe you f sell more into ladies' apparel or children's apparel, then you may use something like a distressed wood backdrop or a um, rug or something behind, kind of like a white fuzzy rug to create a unique design element behind and a kind of a fashion high-end piece behind the image. You can even stage the photos with extra things that make the wearer think, wow, I could have all that too, like a, um, a pair of yoga pants or an accessory, like a pair of shoes, a necklace. And that really helps to bring together the look and helps the, the user envision the apparel that they could be wearing when you stage your photos that way. And that's going to be really important as you're creating ads and trying to promote your products throughout your social channels. All right, so we've talked a little bit about knowing your audience. We've talked that good photography sells. The third one is we're going to take a lot of those tools and we're going to look at how we can make it easy for them to buy. We want people to purchase products. We want them to do it as quickly and easily as possible. It's amazing how many customers actually leave items in their shopping cart um, and don't complete a purchase. They may click through from something they thought was cool but decide that it was just way too difficult to purchase their products. And so having a really strong call to action and um, a mobile optimized website is going to be incredibly important for this step and making it easy for them to complete that purchase. And so when we do that, we want to look at a few different tools. And for this section, I'm going to break it up into three different social channels on how we do this. So uh, we're going to look at doing this through Facebook. We're going to look at doing this through Instagram. We'll look at doing this um, a few different ways through Pinterest as well. So to start, let's look at Facebook. The first thing that you want to do, and this will apply to Instagram as well, is to use a sales-oriented call to action. And so I'm going to head over to Facebook here, and this is going to be a Facebook page that was um, created for this live class just to kind of demonstrate some of the um, things that are available to you if you have a business page set up. So first thing you want to do is set up your business page. That should already be done at this point. Um, and you want to make sure that the template that you have turned on is optimized for shopping. So if you go into settings, you can actually add and create um, some um, editing your page and then also creating some templates that are available. So I went into settings, edit my page, 
and then you'll notice there's a template that Facebook's kind of designed templates that they find being optimal for a page. So always sets the standard, but if you have a business that's for shopping, like they've recommended for me here, I can view what's available on here and I can see what that um, experience looks like and then apply that template. And so you'll see when I go to apply it, it's telling me that now they're going to add some tabs that they find to be optimal on the left-hand side of the screen. And I can customize all this. So I have a shop feature, an offers feature, and an events tab that's going to show up there. So I've moved this now to the shopping template. Now when I scroll down, I can see all of the tabs that will now be on the left-hand side of my page whenever I bring up my Facebook page. And I can move these around. And so posts you always want to have at the top. Um, that's important so they can see what's on your page, if they wanted to reference back to something. Reviews are always great to have high up there because your customers can review your products and you can encourage them to do so. So a lot of people today buy on reviews. It's a huge, huge, huge way to promote your products and to get people to trust you online. So you want to encourage your customers to do that. Photos is great and then your shop and offers will fall in that line as well. And We'll talk a lot about this shop feature because it's incredibly valuable to apparel decorators for their Facebook page. So let's go back to the main page here and take a look at this. So what we're going to do now is we're going to take a look at that shop feature that's going to be on the left hand side of my screen. So if I click see more and then I click shop, now all my customers will be able to access this page. And so I can actually go in and add products from my website um, or um, directly upload them into this tool and we'll talk um, later in one of the tips on ways that you can add a um, service that will do this for you but you can manually go in add your product so I can click add product add a photo from either my page or select a file from my computer go ahead and grab some of these photos that I have ready to go with a wood backdrop so they fit the market that I'm reaching use this photo. I can add a name and we'll talk about this later how you want to optimize always for search key terms um, optimizing your post. So let's say this is going to say monogram flannel tunic. I'll put my price in here for what the cost would be. And if you have a website set up already um, you can kind of create two screens and mirror this to quickly add your products manually or if you have a Shopify or an Etsy, um, a lot of those types of platforms have tools that you can use which will all allow you to automatically import these that we'll talk about shortly. I can add a description on the item. Again, I would want to use some keywords, let them know exactly what they would be getting. Glitters, if it's a foil finish, if it's a um, custom design, if they need to do anything for customizing. I would want to put a checkout URL, so where can they purchase the product um, and how will that be done. You also want to set up either a purchasing portal through Facebook or allow them to go straight to your website to finish the um, order process here. Once I have that set up, I'd click save. Go ahead and put a fake link in here for awesome school spirit tees so we can finish the process. And then you'll notice that this is product will now show up under my shop section. And I can categorize these in different collections. And the cool thing about this um, is it, so if I want to categorize them into cheer apparel or children's apparel or um, sports team uniforms, I can do all that by adding collections. Now when I click on this product and open it up, it gives me the opportunity to share this to where people can purchase it directly from Facebook and then I can even start to do things like um, tagging products and getting creative with that as well as I share these items on my page. And so I can share this out directly, encourage them to make a purchase, tell them a little bit about the cool look or about the opportunity with that. And just allows you to set up more sales products for your um, specific page. So that's one tip on Facebook for getting set up with that, using that shop tab on the side of your screen here. Another really important thing, especially if you have a direct website where you sell products through, is to add a button for your store. And that's really easy, just click add a button, make a purchase, um, and shop now. And so that's another good tool for people to use. You can have them shop on your page and refer them back to that shop section that we just created. Or we can have them shop on our outside website. So whichever you decide to do, um, you can set that up for your store. So we'll go ahead and put that awesome school spirit tease in there. Add the button. So now 
you'll notice on the side of my screen, when somebody comes to my page, they're going to see that option to shop now. And so that's another really great way to drive traffic to either your website to get sales or to use the shop tool to get them to sell, to buy products directly. Another thing I want to look at that's really cool for Facebook is the marketplace. And so if you haven't used the marketplace, this is another tip and tool that a lot of apparel decorators that offer custom services locally will leverage. And so it's a great way to kind of um, pull your brand together locally and get some local sales. So the marketplace, if you're not familiar with it, is basically kind of like a Craigslist style um, marketplace that's online. Facebook basically saw a lot of people using those sales trades and wants pages and a lot of people still do use those um, for looking for things that kind of like an online yard sale where they're looking for local products. So you can list your products in your local area um, or search for products as well using this tool. And so the way it works is you would basically just click that you're selling something, tell them what you're selling, add a price, select a category. So it may be um, apparel for the um, categories so of clothing, men's, women's, um, baby and kids, you can decide that category based on what you're uploading. Add a photo that, again, would be like the photo we're using from our website or something that portrays what you want to sell. Now, one thing I often see a lot of on the marketplace is people um, just posting their services, and I think that's important to do, kind of saying I offer custom screen printing and embroidery, but also then think about the customers that you want to sell to. So if you sell custom birthday shirts, then you want to be able to show that. I think that resonates well with people and better than somebody um, thinking, oh, I don't know when I would need a custom screen print or when I would need something like that. So if you're going to create a product, that's where I would recommend doing that custom birthday shirt, adding your price on here, um, and you want to set your price rather than allowing them to negotiate. I do see a lot of that on this, the marketplace. I don't recommend um, going in with a a negotiable rate, which we see a lot of, because then it allows them to um, want to negotiate or get a less expensive price. So this would be kind of setting up on your website, the price is the price. We'll set our category as baby and kids, and then add some descriptions. I offer custom t-shirts, XYZ, turn around as this, and be as um, upfront as you can as possible about your order process and how everything works if they decide to move forward. And you can always include your business information in there as well. I'm not going to post this since I'm in the Atlanta, Georgia area on here and I don't want somebody contacting me for a birthday shirt. But those are some tips to really think about with Facebook. So we've looked at um, the using the marketplace, we've looked at the shop tab and the shop button. Um, tagging your products and photos is another really cool way to use Facebook. So we just saw how I had created um, on my page a shop section. So if I go back to my awesome school products page and I decide that I want to um, add some products or post about an image, I can actually add products and share things on my page. And so if I want to add that photo maybe of the um, tunic that I had added in my store a little bit earlier, say a little bit about it, then I can even tag it based on what's in my store. And so when somebody goes to purchase this, I can say, um, you know, new fall tunics, get yours today or something, um, and publish that to my page. And now they can directly click on that, go into my shop, purchase it. They can see it costs $35, so they can make a buying decision, and then move forward and make that purchase checking out on my website. I mean, this makes it as easy and seamless as possible to purchase products and to promote them to your customer base. So. Really cool tools there. If you're not using these, I highly recommend them on your Facebook page. Um, other things that we'll talk about is just adding links into your post to your website. So that's also very helpful in um, driving traffic to make a buying decision. So you always want to make sure if you're sharing items that people can see where they can get them, especially if you're using what I would call um, or what they call user generated content. So somebody decides that they want to, um, that they have shared wearing your shirt on Instagram or on Facebook, you get their permission to reuse the image. Um, often people will want to know how they can get that look. So just making sure you're using direct links or tagging products in that photo so they can quickly make that buying decision. Just make it as easy as possible for them to make a purchase. Um, so Facebook's really, really come a long way. And as Facebook comes a long way, they're looking at ways to bring Instagram along with those types of things as well. And so Instagram 
has the options for you to do two things. One is to, again, have a sales-oriented and strong call to action. So when you create ads or when you create posts, um, you want to tell people exactly what you want them to do. And so with mobile users especially, which is where Instagram is optimized for, it's not only about site speed when they're trying to make a purchase, it's also about the simplicity and making it clear to them what you want them to do. And so you want to make sure you're, um, if you want them to buy product that you're any links that you have or any call to action buttons, simply say shop now because you want to just make them aware that you want them to make a purchasing decision and this is how they do it. Um, and so you want to make sure to use those. Instagram actually has eight call to actions. The shop now would be probably the most popular for product based items. Also utilizing shoppable links. So I just want to look at one tool that I'm familiar with. There's a few options available. Um, one that I'm familiar with that a lot of people use is called Half to Have It. Um, and so this, again, is a service that you would have to purchase and decide if it works for your business, if Instagram is somewhere that you really want to sell products. But basically what you could do is it lets your followers have a link, you can kind of see here on their website, that anytime you would post an image, you would want to make sure to let them know where they can purchase it. And so what I recommend doing is putting something that says a little bit about the image to get yours click the link in our bio and I would tag your specific Instagram page and then allow them to click up into this profile and click the link. Now what's cool is this link, what it does is it makes it easy for your users to shop and makes it look like your Instagram or your website. And so it creates an image where they now go to a landing page, they click on that item and they can make a purchase. There's different tools available, link in bio through later. Graham is another one that I'm familiar with. Have to have it is cool because this service also offers um, some analytics dashboards which lets you see how many people clicked on an image, lets you see the views, and lets you dive in a little bit deeper so that way you can see what's really making sense for your business and which pictures are driving sales. And so um, really leveraging this with Instagram especially, you want to make sure that you are making it easy for them to purchase. And Instagram, like I mentioned, with Facebook, with them joining together, it's getting easier, but just staying on the forefront of that. In fact, um, Instagram just recently launched and is, is um, kind of spreading it out more to more and more profiles and pages is that you can actually tag products and now purchase directly from Instagram. So that's another big benefit of following that tagging photos process that we saw on Facebook because it'll all kind of integrate together and make it easy for people to purchase. But making sure you're using those direct links, making sure the link in your bio either directly goes to your website where they can quickly purchase products or having that shoppable link where like have to have it where they can click that link and come onto your page and purchase. So make it simple, make it easy for them to buy. The last thing I want to look at is looking at this through um, Pinterest. And so Pinterest is still a little bit in the niche stages for their version of viable pins. And so viable pins um, was something that was recently introduced last year by Pinterest and it basically allows people to buy your products without ever having to leave Pinterest. So you can see here on the graphic, it adds a buy it link and makes it easy for them to quickly purchase and check out. Now today the pins um, aren't set up for all websites, but if you have a website that's with Shopify, Big Commerce, Magento, um, IBM Commerce, all of those are set up where you can actually create plugins to create these buyable pins and that way you can start to sell. Now if you're on a platform like Etsy where it's no, not available just yet or any other kind of um, WordPress or some kind of commerce like that, then you would want to um, leverage some of those other tools. Pinterest probably isn't there for you just yet when it comes to making it easy for them to buy directly from the images that you're posting. So we've looked at the first one, which is to know your audience. We went through good photography sales, talked about staging photos, we talked about ways to make it easy for them to buy through Facebook, Instagram, and Pinterest. And the fourth trick that we're going to talk about is to how to utilize social ads. And so there is a ton of resources out there about um, using social ads. And so what's important to do is you want to speak to ads, or develop ads that speak to your target audience and drive traffic that's ready to buy. And so everything we've looked at so far with those first two principles where we talked about knowing your audience, we talked about creating good photography, we talked about 
understanding them in a way of, of knowing what exactly would make them want to buy. All of that and, and diving into your niche customer is going to be really important when you start to get into social media ads because you want to make sure that the ad just speaks to who you want it to speak to. And so there's a couple things to keep in mind. Um, like I mentioned, if you're going to dive really, really deep into ads, you can get really um, intense with some of the training and I recommend really, really diving into that before you get started. But you want to make sure for some best practices, um, making sure your branding is subtle. And so often, like I had mentioned earlier, people are on Facebook or Instagram um, and what they're doing is they're specifically looking to engage with friends and family, they're not looking to be sold. And so you want to keep your branding and the images subtle and that's especially important because um, Facebook will actually only allow you to have a highly visual image. They won't allow you to have a lot of text. So branding very subtle, making it something that is more about them and not about you. Using high quality, high quality imagery and photo composition rules like we talked a little bit about earlier and the second tip um, and then you want to really get creative with running some test ads so you can avoid ad fatigue. And so if you're running the same ad constantly, um, it really can create a negative effect in the way that your audience perceives your brand. So just changing up the messaging, changing up the ad helps to keep it fresh, helps to drive more traffic on the same topic. And then also keeping your copy short. So the pictures that you're creating, the, photographies that you're the photography items that you're taking, those should really speak to your brand. Those should sell your product for you. And that's why I put Know Your Audience and Photography so high up in the beginning of this class because when you're online, those things are really speaking for your business and, and they're selling your product for you. And so that's why it's so important to use those images to sell the product and then keep copy at a minimum and keep that copy direct. Keep it, um, if you're using an ad to sell product, make sure it speaks to them in a creative way and is directing what you want them to do. And so it should have that shop now link at the bottom of the ad. And there's a ton of ways to set up ads. Um, I won't go through that today just simply because we don't have enough time. I could spend a whole day of time talking about that um, because there's just so much to learn and so much to really do once you really delve into these things. Um, but think about how you're writing your copy as well. So what's the user getting? Um, is it just going to be, what's more compelling to them and what makes them want to drive action? Is it 50% off this custom t-shirt or is it you get um, a portion of, buy these custom shirts and a portion of this is going to go to this donation? You know, just speaking to them and that really comes down to understanding your audience on which one's going to drive them a little bit more to making that purchase. Okay, so the next thing that we're going to look at, if I dive back into my presentation here, is um, social selling platforms. And so consider using, especially if you're a small business, consider using tools that are going to help you run ads, sell products, set up shop sections in your Facebook and use them effectively. Um, the cost varies for different items. One that I am familiar with is called Shopiel. Um, and so I'll switch into this and just kind of show you guys their website so you can see it's uh, shopial.com. This is one of those platforms that I had mentioned a little bit earlier when we looked at the shop section in the Facebook page that we were on. So this was that side tab that people can come into and I was manually adding products in. With this tool, you can actually connect to your Pinterest or to your Facebook page and they will automatically, if you have one of these supported platforms, so Etsy, um, even Shopify works, although it's not listed right on their homepage, eBay, GoDaddy, Magento, Wix, if you're using one of these platforms, and I know a lot of people do sell product through Etsy, it will actually directly import them into that shop section and allow you to then start to run ads and really quickly promote products the way we had seen with that shop feature on Facebook. And so um, I'd have to double check. I know that this runs on a, um, a free version and they also have different levels and I believe $25 a month is the highest level that you're at. I think it ranges anywhere from $6 to $25 per month for the service and that kind of allows you to um, take that burden off of you and that way your products as you add them to your website or to your Etsy page are directly imported into your Facebook page and again making it easy for people to buy, making it easy for you to promote products and to run ads um, directly from those items and just help people become um, aware of what you're selling and create a buying decision there. And so that would be one of the fifth tips that we'll talk about here using and leveraging some of those social selling platforms. The sixth one that we'll look at 
is going to be um, optimizing your post. This really, really dives into getting your content seen. So anything that you're posting on your social channels, you want it to drive up in the um, social channels that you're using. And so there's a way to do that. Um, the first thing is to you know, do your research and determine what's the best time for your post. It may be different from you than it is from another business. Um, so what, when, is your, when are your customers engaging with your post? That way when you're sharing those items, um, they're able to really see the, them the most often. Other thing is to, con to consider is using photos or videos to engage your audience. So things that are um, highly visual, we're very highly visual learners and in these platforms it's all visual based. So using those good photos, using videos and creating items that will engage with them um, also help to drive traffic up there. When we talked a little bit earlier about ways to connect with your audience when we were talking about what you post. So asking them questions, running polls, getting them to really engage with you is important to help that um, engagement and kind of optimizing your post as well. Targeting specific audiences. When we understand our customers, which was the first point that we shared in this class, we can start to then target them with specific content that's relevant to them and we can optimize it for that. Um, using call to actions, that's another great way um, that we've talked about limiting your characters, so using your photos, using your images to really speak for you instead of what you're saying above the photo. And then lastly, we dive into hashtags and keywords. And so hashtags and keywords have a lot to do with getting your product noticed, especially on channels like Instagram and Pinterest where they're very highly um, searchable and so um, Instagram for one is uh, one thing that we've noticed a lot is the younger generation the Millennials so if you're selling to um, maybe young parents or to teenagers school age kids it's often they search by hashtags on something like Instagram to find businesses or posts that are relevant to what they're looking for and we're starting to see them even shopping simple things like spirit wear or Christmas teas or monograms and looking for things that maybe have businesses that do what they um, are looking for. And so you want to make sure when you're posting anything on your um, Instagram page that you're using some of those hashtags that are relevant. The best way I can always tell people to think about hashtags and keywords whenever you're thinking about what should I add or what should I be saying in these posts is to think about what somebody who wants to buy your product would be looking for. I often see a lot of apparel decorators using hashtags like um, screen print or embroidery and um, that if that's what your customer is looking for then those are the hashtags you should be using but they also may be looking at things like children's apparel, monograms, um, jerseys or team uniforms or something you know, just think about what they're searching for that would get them to, draw, to come to your page or come across your post on one of these social channels. Also if you're using keywords and your descriptions or in your um, post, making sure you're using them but not overusing them. So there's a fine line between those two things. So you want to make sure they're there but you don't want to overwhelm them with um, glitter t-shirts, sparkle, pretty for girls. Like I mean you just don't want to overwhelm them with all these crazy um, keywords because you know that's what works. You want it to still flow naturally in the way that you speak and the way that it shows up. So using all of these tips, making sure the timing's right, using photos, um, sharing additional content that is relevant to them but that is not relevant to your products and to your business. So keeping it what they consider that 80-20 so to where you're um, building more of a relationship with them rather than just saying bye 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 I have these cool products. So that's another great thing to keep in mind. Um, making sure that it's relevant to them, using those call to actions if you want them to go to a link or buy a product if you're sharing an item, making sure that's available and then your hashtags too. So the seventh thing that I want to share here is one that's kind of a new um, trick or something new that a lot of apparel brands are using and that is leveraging social influencers. So these are people that uh, may be big on Instagram or maybe big on Facebook that have an audience that's targeted to your products. And so um, the way I see this is if you have somebody is leveraging your customers or people that are really big in a area to promote your products. So maybe they're big in um, working with local moms or working with um, different organizations where they are speaking to parents and that's going to allow them to, to show your children's apparel to that audience and I always kind of reference those two just to keep it consistent throughout the presentation. 
but thinking even more so about how you can leverage customers that use your products. So um, encouraging them to share socially with their audience where they got that school spirit wear t-shirt so that when they're looking for custom school spirit wear for themselves, they are going to be able to look for you as well. And so there's a big benefit to encouraging your customers to tag you, not only for getting those images so that you can reuse them and show your items in everyday life um, and in other everyday experiences with your customers, but also so that people can look at those images and think, wow, I want that that's where I can buy it because they've tagged you in it. So definitely encourage your customers to do that. Look at unique elements and who you can reach out to to promote your products. Um, there's even some interesting cheer brands that I've, I know of that utilize cheer influencers. So um, children that are big in, um, and teenagers that are really big in the cheer market and they um, give them X amount of free product or they give them a, um, a percentage off their orders if they post so much content about their item. So let's say I'm selling something like custom cheer bows and I want to reach out to some of these people that are, some of these um, influencers or people that are big in the cheer market, I may tell them if you promote this product, I will give you XYZ off your next order or I might um, give you a percentage of commission. You can really set these up any way that you want. And there's a ton, if you do research um, online, there's a ton of platforms and tools that allow you to help manage if you decide to go this route and you want to start to use people that can um, work on a commission basis by promoting your products socially and allowing them to have a kickback from what they sell directly from their social Instagram pages and things. But it's a really cool way to really expand your sales reps and expand your reach on social by leveraging customers and people that are already in the market. So. Just to recap, we, care, we covered seven different tips and tricks for growing your business today. We talked about knowing your audience. We talked about having good photography. We talked about making it easy for them to buy through your social channels, through web optimized uh, or mobile optimized websites. We've talked about optimizing your posts with hashtags, keywords, uh, making sure things are seen. We've talked about leveraging social influencers. Uh, we have talked about leveraging advertising. And then the sixth one that we had talked about was, um, I'm gonna, I almost got them all here. The sixth one we talked about was using social selling platforms. So things like Shopeeo where they can help to make it easy for you to start selling on your social channels. So just to recap, um, I haven't seen a whole lot of questions coming in on our Facebook Live feed here today. Hopefully you guys have all been engaged and taking all this in. Um, Carlos, after, this class, the um, video will be available on the video section here on Facebook, so you can view that anytime um, just by looking at the video's library and looking for this topic here on social media. Um, and I'm glad, Jennifer, that this is very helpful. Hopefully you can start to implement some of those. There's some really cool tips for the shop section and the page on the, the side of your business page there. Um, did I have any questions, Joe, coming in on GoToWebinar? Yes, we have several questions that have come in. Um, Sherry would like to know, can you give some suggestions as to where they can do research on their customer base? Um, yeah, so there's actually a few different ways you can do research on your customer base um, as far as understanding your audience. So um, I would pick a niche and try to decide. You can do this through some different tools, but um, if you want to look at really understanding your customers, so talking with uh, maybe sales reps that you have in your area, customer service people in your area who, who understand your customer, you can use some tools. Uh, really even some market research firms like Nielsen or Experian, um, they publish what I would call lifestyle reports. And so those lifestyle reports um, will often say, this type of customer, this is kind of the profile that you're looking at. And so that allows you to look at Nielsen or Experian, those um, large brand, those large uh, research organizations and take one of those customer type profiles and um, use that for kind of mirroring your um, audience and kind of your marketing for that. Uh, Jacqueline would like to know are Facebook pages free for businesses? Yes, Facebook pages are free for businesses. The t-shirt lady asks, uh, do you need a third party software to add the shop? Yes, so to add the shoppable link within your Instagram, you would want to use a third-party site for that. Today, um, Instagram, or, uh, Instagram and Facebook have not created their own 
tool, so there's a ton available, so you'd want to do some research. Like I mentioned, Latergram, I know has one, Have to Have It has one, and there's a few other out there, so look and see um, pricing-wise which one fits your needs better. Some of them have, some of them are more expensive because they have some really in-depth um, analytics tools that you can really dive into. Other ones, if you're just trying to drive traffic, are a little bit less expensive but don't have all those same analytic tools. Uh, Danielle would like to know if the uh, brochure, not the brochures, but your slides that you've been showing throughout your uh, presentation today, would that be available as a white sheet that they could download? Yeah, so we will make this presentation download for now on stallstv.com under the resources tab, so we'll have that up this week. Um, but keep in mind also that we are going to be creating a social media ebook, so um, if you want to leave your information, um, you can. Um, actually just go to stallstv.com and sign up and then we will go ahead and make sure you get access or notify when that ebook is available. Uh, Sam would like to know, can you accept payment through your business Facebook page messenger like you can on your personal page? Yes, yeah, so you are able to set up to receive payment through your Facebook page if you set up something like the shop on the left hand side of your screen. Um, to do that you would want to set up um, a payment portal with something like Stripe. So Stripe is a payment processing website. And so if you set up a Stripe account with Stripe.com, you can then link that back into your Facebook shop page and they can buy directly from there so you don't have to send them out to a website. And that's all we have right now. Okay, so I got a couple coming in on Facebook Live. I'm seeing Rhonda, can I give an example of an 80-20 um, selling business relationship model for Facebook? So. This would be for um, an example, I always like to use things that um, I'm passionate about, so I usually either children's apparel or cheer stuff, um, and so if I'm selling something like cheer, I would say um, sharing posts that maybe talk about cheerleading, have a cool quote, um, or that reference something that just a cheerleader would really engage with, but still relevant to your brand. Um, so maybe something cool about a cheer competition, and then the 20% would be showing them um, your products and so saying things like check out this cool cheer hair bow or check out these cool shirts for cheer camp and so that's kind of an example of building the relationship and just posting things that they would want to engage with and that's cool to them versus your products. And Tony, um, can you have a separate shop page from your uh, personal page? I am not 100% sure that I've never played around with the settings on my personal page. Um, but I'm, I don't believe so, but that's something we'd have to check and make sure. All right, looks like I've got all the questions so far today. Thank you guys for joining us on Facebook Live as well as through GoToWebinar. This recording will be available here on the Facebook page under the video section, um, and it'll also be available on StallsDB.com, so you can check that out later if you want to reference anything back. But I will see you next time. Thanks for coming.